15 operating systems, one phone, one SD card, all loaded at once. Now, none of these are Android or iOS, and it's year-end. So let's review everything you can do with this phone and the state of many of these, I'm gonna break this into three parts. The first part is the nostalgia. No one's probably gonna use these operating systems, but they're just kind of fun to go back 10 years to see what design was like. The second is development. A lot of these are under heavy development. I just kind of wanna peruse these just to kind of show you what the actual screen looks like and where the state of it is. And then finally, there's two in here that I think you could probably use as a daily driver, and I'm gonna make the attempt at a daily driver. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a brand new phone that no one has yet. And as long as it comes through customs, I'll have it in January. So with that, let's get on the actual phone screen here. I'm gonna just do a screen capture, so to speak, using a second camera. I wish I could actually pull directly from the phone to give you a really good resolution. However, yeah, these operating systems are still very new and pulling directly from them is not an option for me yet. But as soon as they have HDMI out, I will definitely do that. But let's do this. Here is the initial boot screen of this, and it's a Pine Phone SD card, but we have all 15 different operating systems. And some of these are a little bit redundant. We have like Arch Linux, uh, which has a couple different spins of it. So let's start with the nostalgia. Loon OS is what we'll start with. Loon OS is a web OS alternative. It basically brings back web OS from the grave. And if you're not familiar with WebOS, it was an HP product back in, I think the late 2000s and early 2010s. And this has some really old reminiscent design and they've updated a little bit, but I did find it was just a bit clunky for my taste. But here's like the dialer and I'm just gonna flip through this one real quick as most people that don't know WebOS won't like this operating system. Here is our messaging which you can see kind of how it cut off. WebOS had a uh, probably the biggest adoption on tablet, so I, it's not that surprising that some of these are a little bit off. And then you have your mail, and you can see the text is pretty darn small over here, which, again, not that surprising because this was originally meant for a tablet, I believe. But here's all the apps that come preloaded with this. As far as an actual store and it getting more applications, I'm not sure what the future holds for this, but in this app drawer, you do have photos, videos, terminal, a camera, of course, a calculator, and that's about it. All right, and that's Loon OS or a web OS alternative. Let's switch to the next alternative, and I'm gonna hold down power to get out of web OS, and we're just gonna shut this phone down. All right, so now we're gonna go down to the next one, which I'm gonna put Memo. Now you notice I will come back to some of these as I consider them the development branch, so stay tuned for the next part. With Memo, some people might enjoy this one with it being kind of an old spin of a Nokia, I think it was the N900 phone. And this one, I don't even know if it does come out of landscape mode. I cannot find an actual uh, spot to actually fix it. You'd think it'd be under displays, but it is not. And under theming, I can't find it here either, which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> alrighty then. Well, I think this is a short little test run. And here's the apps that you got on here. You got old Debian, Calendar, Terminal, and that's not really even a complete operating system. But if you had an N900, uh, yeah. Here's the new reiteration of it that is obviously not fully baked. And I'm gonna switch this off right now, and we'll move on to the more development models of Linux phones. All right, now the development model, I'm gonna go pretty fast, and I'm gonna lump some of these into the same categories. You might see PMOS down here towards the bottom, that's post-market OS. I'm not gonna to touch on that one that much. So let's go into Arch Linux first, and you'll notice what this one does. This isn't actually a fully interface, it's just kind of a base to play with. This is the development models, and as you see, we have this 
where we need a keyboard and mouse attached to it to do pretty much anything with it. So we'll, we'll go ahead, kill out of the Arch Linux branch, but we do have some people that did build on this and the Minjaro team built on the Arch Linux ARM branch, which we will go to next. And there's two spins of the Manjaro Linux, which is Fosh and Plasma. Fosh is really interesting, and right now it's in beta, so they're still working on kind of cleaning this up a bit. All right, here we go. Now, Fosh was created by Purism, so you're going to see a lot of similarities if you've seen any Purism phones. Now, this one's a bit more flushed out, and that is, again, thanks to Purism. And we'll go ahead and do the initial setup here. Uh, it is actually pretty snappy. I can tell it's definitely using some acceleration. You have Firefox. You have some other really kind of cool features. This one does utilize the Linux store, so you can add more things to it. This is still in development. I wouldn't use this as a daily driver, but it's getting there. And you can add full Linux things, hook this up to a dock in the future and have an entire Linux based computer, not only in your pocket, but you could easily dock it to a screen and use this as you would a computer, which is great because these are just little computers. And that's the kind of selling point for a lot of these Linux OSs. And here's the, the swipe down, or actually it's a tap down. It, they're still working, I think, on some of the gesture controls. Again, not fully baked in my opinion, but cellular Wi-Fi. Uh, I know in the cellular portion they have a lot of carriers covered where you can actually call make calls out you can receive text messages for the most part but some mms messages aren't here and i'll show you the messaging app just so you can see that i'll go ahead and pull up firefox as well but i'm not going to waste my time too much on fosh as i did cover this in my last video where i was using debian fosh instead of arch fosh and this one's still obviously still a bit rough around the edges it being a beta release and oh, there you go. There's Firefox that just pulled up. But let's go ahead, shut this guy down, and we'll hit the little power button. A little bit weird shutting the Fosh screen down. I, I don't like where they're putting like the power buttons and those types of things. All right, back to our main screen here. Now, this is KDE Plasma on Manjaro for this operating system. All right, and here is our boot screen for KDE Plasma. We'll go ahead, swipe up. I like this design a bit better than Fosh. It seems a little cleaner. And I will say it's not as baked though, where your app tray, you have all this and it's pretty clean. And for it, this being a little small $200 development phone, it still is very snappy, which is nice. But much like Fosh, you have terminal, a lot of the other applications you do. And it's really meant for KDE Connect and some other things that you can just add into here. I've SSH'd into these. Actually, I, I ran Minecraft server in one of the prior videos. Here is the calling, which is pretty cool. You got a dialer, your contacts, and just a history, which I haven't used on this one. We'll go ahead and close out. You can see kind of your, your actual app tray here where this is the app tray, but you also can select your open apps by clicking this. I like the interface a bit better than Fosh, with the KDE, which is not too surprising as I've always loved the desktop environment KDE. Now, other than what I just talked about, I will say this one is getting a lot better. I started this at the beginning of the year and I couldn't even get a functional desktop. As you see, they've really made a lot of leaps and strides. But again, much like Fosh, I still think we're about a year or two out before this could become a real true daily driver. And I think we got to hold the power button down on this guy. Let's see what this does. And you can see the interface here. A little bit easier to shut this guy down, I think. All right, moving on to our next development OS. Mobian and KDE Neon, I think, are probably the most interesting. Like, this is basically Fosh and KDE. Much like we were in just now with Plasma, KDE Neon's very reminiscent of that. Just a different base, where Manjaro is Arch-based. This one is Debian based. Now I will say uh, Mobian is probably my favorite. My last video where I was saying, hey, <laughs> getting rid of iOS and Android, I was using Mobian. It was called Debian Fosh back then. I'm really happy they changed the actual name of Debian Fosh to Mobian. It just makes a lot more sense. And this one's probably the most polished. If you like Fosh and you're using a Pine phone, Mobian is probably what I would choose 
for a daily driver if I was like developing on a desktop. Now down here, SXMO is an actual post-market OS, is the bootloader, but it's almost like a tiling window manager for your phone. I couldn't really get around and mess around too much with this, but it was very interesting for people that love tiling window managers, check out that spin. Uh, I Like I said, I couldn't really tinker around with it, otherwise I'd show it in this video. And the other one is GNOME, which I didn't really show in this video either. It's still under heavy development. Fosh is just a far better alternative. So that's why those exist, but I'm not gonna show them again. They're just such an early development, it's not worth it. But moving on past the rest of these, I wanna get into the functional ones, the ones that you can actually use as a daily driver now and exist out in the wild, and you can actually buy phones with them. And that's Sailfish and also Ubuntu Touch. So let's go ahead and jump into Sailfish and see this beautiful operating system for mobile that isn't iOS or Android that you can actually use. It's probably the prettiest non-iOS Android phone out there. Actually, I think it's even prettier than iOS and Android. That's how beautiful this OS is. Now, they have this little spinning circle and you just swipe from the left. Now, everything's done with swipe gestures on Sailfish. This is actually highly used in Russia of all places that actually you can see all the different theming. I mean, there's so much awesome, like cool things you can do with this with just a touch of a button. Now, Sailfish is a very interesting prospect and it's actually actively developed. Obviously, you're not gonna have nearly the apps. And if you wanna use this as like a desktop, I'm not sure how well that'll do. That's why it's not necessarily one I'd recommend for maybe a Linux phone, but if you really want a mobile operating system that you're gonna just live on like you would an Android or an iOS, this one you really can't go wrong with. Again, it just feels fantastic. It is very responsive. Uh, everything on it is probably the most polished out of everything I've touched today or am gonna touch today. That's why I recommend it for those hardcore mobile users. Now I'm gonna go into like the settings. You can see how it gives you like little guides because everything's a little bit different than how you normally would do. So here's, here's settings and you just flip through and go, okay, I wanna change whatever it is in here. It's a fully functional OS. And this is a neat little interesting tidbit up here is how you actually navigate forward and backwards is, is just this little top title bar, which is pretty darn cool. And we'll just swipe down. So if you're in here, we'll just swipe down to kill it. Pull up messaging. When you pull down, you can see it highlight new message and so forth. And when you click this, it'll actually go to compose a new message. And swiping, you can switch between applications, but swiping down, now the phone itself, let's go ahead and pull it up. And you could put a SIM card in, you have the dialer, your history, and then your contacts. And the rest of this is pretty darn basic. We'll go ahead and pull up the Jolla store and see, it. yeah, I actually have to sign up for an account because this is proprietary, much like Android and iOS, where it's so pretty, but at the same time, I don't think I would jump from one closed ecosystem to another one. However, if you just want something different that looks cool, by all means, Sailfish has you. It is an amazing, beautiful, touch-oriented OS. And for powering down, we're just gonna hit the little power button at the top, and goodbye. All right, and for the last one, probably my favorite out of this entire list is gonna be Ubuntu Touch at the bottom here. Let's go ahead and boot into it. This is the best operating system for 2021 when it comes to Linux phones. All right, and then this is our screen. We're just gonna swipe right and we'll go ahead and enter our passcode. And here's our main screen. We have the app tray over here with your most used apps. If you need all of the apps, you can just press the little Ubuntu button. Now, most people are used to swiping up to get rid of apps. You swipe over to the right and it kind of puts it at a skew and then you can swipe up to kill the app in Ubuntu Touch, which is a pretty awesome design. Again, this is probably the best because you have full features of the Linux ecosystem. You can plug this up, I can VNC to computers, I could use this as a computer, which is great. 
it has a fully featured dialer and also messaging that works quite well. Again, multimedia messaging, depending on your carrier, but here's just your basic dialer. Again, we'll swipe right, swipe up to get rid of it, come over into our chat, and here is our messaging. Compose a new message by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. So we just swipe up from the bottom of the screen, we type our number and our message in, and we'll have it. Contacts, we'll go ahead and pull it up real fast. And you can see you can import directly from Google, which makes this much easier. Again, why Ubuntu Touch would be my go-to if I was gonna do Linux OS's as a daily driver instead of Android or iOS. You can import directly from Google or vCard, and you, you can just swipe up to create a new one, put a first last name, and then also the picture of the person and an email, just everything that you want or add a separate field. And again, we'll move out of that. This also has some one of the most developed app stores out of any mobile device that's not an Android or iOS. You can see I've already installed like VNC, but you have a lot of apps that have come in here and more and more are getting added every day where this one has a lot of things. Now, a lot of people think of Ubuntu Touch and immediately go, well, I don't like Ubuntu or I don't like Canonical. This is actually made by a completely separate company called UbiPorts. It comes with Morph Browser, which I'm not really that familiar with, but I'm sure it's pretty good. And if you don't like this, you can always install Firefox as well, or even possibly even Google Chrome. I haven't actually tried the Google Chrome on here, but I know Firefox for sure works. And I actually just typed Google in the address bar and it actually brought, actually did the search with DuckDuckGo, which is pretty cool. I actually like a lot of the uh, aesthetics of this because most people that are going into the Linux phone are privacy and security oriented. That's it for the favorites bar. Now there's still a lot more from the top part here. You have location settings, you have Bluetooth, there's the network mode where you can actually turn on your flight mode or cellular data. You can turn that on and off. Sound, battery, kind of shows you where it is. We're at 73% battery. I started this video at about 100% battery as the battery on the Pine phone. It's kind of terrible. There's one last thing I want to show you on Ubuntu Touch, and that is mouse touchpad. And a lot of these settings here is really meant to take this and have your phone OS, but also be able to dock it into a, a monitor and keyboard and be able to go past this into a full-fledged pocket computer that you can easily access. Now, there's a couple other things I want to go over, but let's go ahead and power this guy down. I'll hold the power button and I'll just select power off. Now, before I let you go, this phone, the Pine phone where I did all the testing on, all with one thing. This is a development first model of any kind of Linux phone ever to exist. It will never be a daily driver for me. I know that now, but it unlocked what we is capable of seeing and let me tinker and get in there and really find and, and figure out what is possible, what the future could look like for an open source security privacy oriented phone. This next year, I'm going to be looking at the Librem 5. I'm going to be looking at the Vola phone, which is actually that phone I talked about in the beginning. As long as it comes through customs, I should be able to get that sometime in January, and I'm going to be able to install Ubuntu Touch and use it as a daily driver in 2021. And I can't wait to make that video. But with that said, what are you looking for with this phone? You just to have your privacy and security back? Maybe. But I'm more interested in actually the syncing up and using it as a computer and a phone. Again, that's where my angle is on these. That's where my passion is with these because honestly, security privacy, <laughs> that's a whole separate video. And uh, honestly, these phones I think are a really nice start. But with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.